Hey guys, how you doing? It's that guy. First things first, I'd like to apologise for not being around as much. I've been ill and then work got seriously understaffed, so I had to pull a lot of extra shifts. But hopefully things will settle down now and I should be having a more regular upload schedule. So, back to the subject. Anyone who knows me knows I am a massive, massive Marvel fan. And I saw the first Deadpool film and the second one was coming out. I thought, wow, I have to go and see that. And I think my favourite anti-hero of the Marvel Universe has to be Deadpool. I'm sure a lot of people out there will agree with me. He is the most wackiest, funniest character out there. So I had high hopes for this second film and I did not disappoint at all. It was so good. I highly recommend you go and see it if you haven't seen it. I was before watching too much of this video as well because I will talk about the film plot in a couple of minutes. But first things first, People ask me, is it better or worse than the first one? And I say to them, listen, it's not better and it's not worse. It's pretty much on the same path. I mean, it pulls things from the first film into the second film. Not too much that it's not unfunny. And the jokes aren't overused either. It's not like it leaves you there thinking, huh? You know, if you use a joke too much, it gets old and stale. Luckily, the, the second film didn't do that at all. It was pretty good I have to say well let's talk about the film now shall we so like I said if you haven't seen the film go and see it I believe it's out on DVD and Blu-ray now yeah it is yeah I'm pretty sure it is so the film starts off and Deadpool's an assassin for hire he's going around killing all these guys and he's late for his anniversary with his girlfriend so he goes back to his um, he goes back to his girlfriend and one of the people he's meant to kill follows him home and kills the girlfriend. Yep, just like that. And Deadpool decides to blow himself up. He's on the low barrels of petrol, throws a cigar in the air, blows himself up. And he and it opens like that and basically there's like you know the first film with all the things like Craig Weiss on Jackass and all that. It's the same thing but only it's like crowd reactions with his girlfriend just died like what did that happen all this crap so yeah that was quite amusing the throwback from the first film and uh he has a vision of his girlfriend telling him uh, he's got to find his heart and such and the opening is like a bond film a film theme song sung by celine dion which i thought was absolutely amazing and you know like the opening of bond films like golden eye goldfinger all that or like the uh, the old dancing and such, yeah, they had the stuff like that going on, but it was all Deadpool and you know how Deadpool is. And so yeah, so he's blown himself up, and Slosses picks him up, takes him back to the the um, Xavier Mansion, and puts him back together again. And he's walking around the mansion, and you know they throwback from the first film again. They walk past this door, and there's all the other X Men in there. That's a throwback from the first film. Where he said, oh, you can't afford the other extras. You've got Charles Xavier in there. They've got Quicksilver. They've got Beast. And Beast just slowly walks up to the door and pulls it closed. So <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. I actually burst out laughing in the cinema about that. I just found it so funny. So apparently the only thing he has to remember his girlfriend by is this little skeeble token. So he decides to join the X-Men for a while for, as a form of healing. And uh, they get um, him, Colossus, and Negasonic Teenage Warhead, I believe the name is. Fucking ridiculously long, but hey, it's what you can do. They get a uh, call about unstable mutants. His name is Russell Collins. Later on in the Marvel Universe, he becomes Fire Fist. Yes, he's like, he can control fire, or not like Pyro, but he can create fire with his hands and. I don't know, blow people up and such. It's pretty cool, but he's not that well known, so I don't blame you for not knowing who he is. So, Colossus, um, Negaton, Teenage Warhead, and Deadpool go to this success call, and they turn up in an orphanage. It's um, called a Mutant Rehabilitation Center. I'm oh, sorry if I stumbled over that word there. Rehabilit. Yeah, it's an orphanage for mutants. <laughs> Let's just leave it at that. And um, basically, they find out that Russell was abused by the people. So Wade Deadpool 
um, kills one of these staff members and Colossus tells me he shouldn't be killing people and stops him. In the end, Russell and Deadpool get captured and put into a prison called the Icebox. And they get given these collars that stop their mutant powers from being active, so um, Russell Collins can't, can't use his fire powers and Deadpool can't regenerate and his cancer is back, so he is slowly dying. Which seems like a, you know, pretty shitty deal. Then you get a shot of the other person in this film, Cable. Oh my god, he looks absolutely amazing. You see him in this like, desolate wasteland, there's all this burnt out buildings and stuff. And he sees this scorched teddy bear on the floor, he picks it up. And basically, Russell has killed his family. And he has to go back in time to stop him before he kills someone and it goes on a massive rampage. Apparently if he kills one person, he gets a taste for it and go on a rampage and kill Cable's family. So he has to go back in time and stop him before he does that. Right, so Cable breaks into prison and gets in a scuffle with Deadpool. He takes the Skeeble token with last memento of his girlfriend and in their fight his collar breaks. So he's no longer dying of cancer. And they have a bit massive fight, and Cable asks why he's protecting this boy Russell. And he goes, he says to him that he doesn't care, and he's, it's not about him, and all that. And it's just, I suppose, mainly just to protect him from Cable, I guess. So he's saying he doesn't care about him, but Russell overhears this and thinks that no one cares about him, just like when he's in the orphanage, all those people hate him. And, abusing him and so not so he thinks that Deadpool doesn't care and it, it drives him a bit you know sad and such um and Deadpool has another near-death experience after being pummeled by Cable he sees his um girlfriend again Vanessa and she tells him something and like find the heart or something and he thinks he needs to save Russell to get get back to his girlfriend so he decides to create a force he starts having interviews for new superheroes and that is those interviews are some of the funniest bits in it there's a guy called Vanish they start talking to him you can't see him on there obviously because his name's Vanish you think he's invisible and there's no response and they say oh maybe he's not actually there <laughs> there's also another guy uh, his name is oh what is his name um, ah, Peter, that was it, Peter, he kind of turns up to the interview, he goes, so what's your powers, he goes, well, I don't really have any, but I just want to be included, he goes, you're in, uh, there's also Shatterstar, uh, Venom, maybe, close bit of poison, anyway, and also my favourite mutant, probably of all time, is Domino, she walks in there, he goes, so, what's your mutant power, and she says, I'm lucky. He says, that's not a mutant power. That's not that's not a superpower. He says, yes it is. Let's just compromise and say it isn't. That that cracks me up a bit as well. That was, so that's some of the best bits in the, the interview sequence. Anyway, so they decide to go and break into the icebox to free Russell. And they all decide to jump out. The, he, he decides they're all going to jump out the plane. They say, it's too windy, you never make it. And surprisingly enough, everybody dies apart from Peter, Deadpool, and Domino, because obviously she's lucky. Although Peter does get injured, um, the guy who spits poison gets lands into a uh, wood chipper, and Peter goes to help him, and he spits on Peter's face, and he, get, he gets ah in all his face and such. Vanish uh, flies into the electric poles and electrocutes himself. That's the only time that you actually see is what he looks like. So, yeah, it was quite amusing. And Domino is flying towards, and Deadpool flies smack bang into a billboard and is just hanging there while he watches Domino follow the icebox, go towards the icebox. Meanwhile, um, Russell has decided to make friends with the biggest, baddest, toughest person in the icebox. You don't know who it is yet, but 
he rules and the whole place like shakes and you, he, this is going to be some massive arsehole and cause a lot of problems. So, all the prisoners are being transported by a convoy and they all catch up to the um, transport colony. But who's waiting for them? It's obviously Cable. It's a massive fight with Cable and why this is going on? Um, Russell, he frees his good old friend, the biggest, baddest asshole in the whole prison. You get, I won't say, spoil it for you yet. It will come up. And Cable's there and he's smacking around Deadpool and Domino's off doing all our lucky stuff, you know, avoiding all these crashes and such. It's a pretty cool fight scene. And Cable tries to shoot Deadpool and he gets his sword and just slices it in half. Then Paul, Deadpool um, um, just stands there. And then Cable starts shooting him and he's swinging his swords like this. Uh, it seems to think, see that he stops and every bullet, he's got bullet holes all over him. He goes, damn, your bullets are fast. That cracked me up so much. It was hilarious. So, eventually, Russell's brand new friend destroys the convoy and they end up crashing near the orphanage. And uh, who's his good old friend? It's Juggernaut. Now, it's not Vinnie Jones from X3 Juggernaut, no. But it's still pretty good. And he's having a conversation with Russell when he's saying about um, his brother uses his mind tricks on him. His brother being Charles Xavier. And he, he goes, oh, that sucks. And he goes, well, yeah, it's not, it's not too bad, though. He's in a wheelchair now. So that's another throwback to other X-Men films, if you know the law between Charles Xavier and the Juggernaut being brothers. And, um, yeah, so they're at the, near the end of the office now. He takes them to the office because he wants to get revenge on all the people that abused him. So he's there, and then Deadpool shows up after the crash of the convoy. And De um, Domino's there as well. So they're there preparing to stop Russell going mad and whatever. And Cable decides to work with Domino and Wade to try and stop him killing the first person. So he's there, but at some point, uh, Juggernaut rips Deadpool in half, which is hilarious, in my opinion, anyway. I don't know if anyone else actually. I, I, when I was in the cinema, I feel laughed out loud. Before that though, he gets thrown through a building and there's a kid there eating some cereal. And he's, he's, he's signed a cereal box for this kid. He signs it Ryan Reynolds, which is the actor who plays Deadpool. That was quite a humorous scene as well. So anyway, they decide to try and stop um, Russell from killing um, the headmaster of the school. Uh, Colossus turns up to help and all that and he takes on Juggernaut and is all fighting out and all that. And he's a um, cable decides to shoot Russell, seeing he can't be contained. And Deadpool puts on the collar to stop him from regenerating and dodge from the bullet to save Russell. And because he shot the collar and he can't regenerate, and Russell thinks, Oh my god, he's died to save me, and all this, and maybe I shouldn't kill him, and all this. Meanwhile, Domino's in the orphanage saving all the kids. And she's, oh, I need a bus. Sonny, this bus comes plowing through the side of the building because, so she can transport the kids out. Now, that is lucky. And so, um, De Cable has this time device. He's only had one use, though. He decides to rewind the time back before Deadpool jumps in front of the bullet. And he pats him on the shoulder. He goes, you, you can talk him down. And he puts on the collar. And he goes tries to talk to Russell again, and he, goes, he refuses to believe him, and he decides to shoot, when Cable goes to shoot him again, Wade dies in front of the bullet again, and lays on the floor, and you think, oh god, he's died again, what was the point of that? But then you realise, when he taps him on the shoulder, he put that, his, his girlfriend Vanessa's skee-ball token in his pocket, so it deflected the bullet, and Russell sees that Deadpool is willing to sacrifice his life for him, and realise he will do care. And then this bus comes plowing through the headmaster. <laughs> no, it's a taxi that comes plowing through the headmaster and kills him anyway. It's a good old taxi driver that Deadpool used in the first film. 
it's, and he goes, ah, oh, yes, I finally got the first blood and all this. And he's like, but, yeah, that was quite humorous, so him asked to die anyway. And then, Colossus and Deadpool had this old bro hug, and then Deadpool starts screaming up to Colossus' ass. There's a big old bromance going on there. But then he goes to turn to Cable and says, you know, you can't go back now. I have one use, and he goes, it's fine, and all this. And then it starts with the credits, which I have to say, were quite quite funny. It's got the drawings of old like Deadpool, like it's got the it's got the picture of um, drawn picture of Juggers as he puts it, or Juggernaut, as his real name is. And then it has the after credit sequence, which is quite humorous. It's got um, Negasonic Sonic Teenage Warhead and her, her girlfriend Yukiko, and they're messing around with um, Cable's time device, and they get it working again. And so Deadpool takes it and uh, goes to fix the timelines, I would say. He goes back to um, X-Men Origins. And we know how the Deadpool's in there. He turns up and you see Wolverine there and you see the uh, uh, Deadpool there facing him with his mouth sewn shut. And so the actual Deadpool come, turns up and shoots him in the head. He goes, don't worry, I'm just fixing the timelines. <laughs> shoots for a few more times and kicks him and then disappears. Then he um then he goes um to another film there's a bit, there's Ronald Reynolds there. He's got a script, he's reading it, it's Green Lantern and he goes, hmm, now now Wade, you finally reached the big time. And he and then he shoots him in the back of the head. He's got his big belt hole and Deadpool's there and goes, Now, that's sorted. You're welcome, Canada Which I thought was hilarious. And he also goes back in time to save Peter, because everyone loves Peter with his big, fantastic moustache. He says to, um, he goes, Go, Peter, save yourself. Don't worry about us. You live that life with your beautiful moustache, you beautiful, beautiful man. And I thought that was hilarious as well. But, of course, the most, the greatest thing he did when he went back in time was save his girlfriend. He turns up at the anniversary of the two the two year anniversary or something like that, something like that. and the guy who turns up to kill Vanessa he throws all these knives at him he ha he's got a sharpened cheese slicer and hits him straight in the forehead and kills him so his girlfriend's alive everything's well and the movie ends I have to say this film is probably in my top five it's pretty good it's there with Deadpool 1 see the film it's absolutely amazing, and I will see you uh, for my next film review, which is Ant-Man the Wasp. That was, I've seen that, I'll be doing that review very shortly, and I promise it won't take as long as this one has to come out. I'll see you next time.